Have you ever wondered you can date and not make a complete mess of yourself in the process? That's what we'll talk about today. Every one of us needs to show how much we care for each other and in the process, care for ourselves. Lady Diana, Princess of Wales. Today we're going to talk about the book, The Selfish Romantic, How to Date Without Feeling Bad About Yourself by Michelle Ellman. After a series of kind of serious podcast topics and thought we'd take something that would make life a little bit more entertaining, more fun, more exciting for ourselves. When I was actively trying to date, I was kind of a mess. I didn't do very well with guys. I was terrible at it. And most of them liked my friend anyway. And at one point, I just decided, until she gets married, I'm just giving up dating because this is just not working out for me. It frustrated me. It was struggling. And I saw people around me, and they seemed to enjoy dating. Friend liked dating. People in college enjoyed dating. It didn't seem like much of a problem. But for me, it undermined almost every good thought I had about myself. I think today, if I were to start dating, I'd probably do a lot better than I did back in the day. I think I have a better sense of myself. I have more confidence in myself. And I know better what I want. And this book was interesting because when reading it, I think we have different experiences for sure. But this book almost nearly explained the entire way I feel about dating. I didn't enjoy it. I found it humiliating. And I just struggled through the entire process. And when reading this book, I realized that she went through a similar process. She found it a struggle. I mean, she had some other issues that I had. I mean, I was a nerd. I'm overweight. I didn't do, like I said, very well with guys in general because they were always looking for someone more attractive, it seemed to me. But she also has some additional issues. She has some health concerns. She's someone who has race issues that people have treated her poorly with. And being someone, I think, who is geeky, perhaps, and has some weight issues as well. It was a struggle for her, and she didn't enjoy doing it. And while I don't enjoy the word selfish, I think I understand what she means. Because I don't think it is selfish to also take care of the things that matter to you. I think that was part of the problem of what I did wrong while dating. I was thinking, well, what does the guy think of me? I wonder if he likes me. I wonder where this is going. And it was just a struggle all the time. And she says that we get a lot of pressure from our families. They want to know who we're going to marry. And she says, when are the parents going to get their grandbabies? There's all sorts of pressure. And she said that if we can be more selfish, although, like I said, I don't think it is selfish. I think it's just treating yourself as a valuable person in this relationship, which a lot of people don't do when they're dating. And she says that the word selfish has some modern stigma to it. And I have some stigma with the word as well. But she says that it means to her that it's the thing that you can do for other people around you. It's the responsible thing to do. And it's basically treating yourself like a human being. I don't think that's selfish. She realized that she learned boundaries of how to get herself to be treated properly while dating. And so while I, again, don't agree with the word dating, I'm exactly on target with what she's trying to say here. And that's why I think this book is so powerful, because it strikes this balance that I was not expecting to find in this book. When I first started the book and I saw the title, The Selfish Romantic, I thought this was going to be a book about me, me, me. It really wasn't. It was about we, we, we. And I like that part of the book. But she said this book is for you if you're having highs and lows with dating, if you want different kinds of results than you've had in the past. In the end, she says that if you choose not to date, you can't really complain about dating. You can't really complain about feeling lonely or not dating because you're not even trying. I remember I said to my friend, boy, it'd be nice if I met a guy I really liked. And she says, well, you would actually have to leave your house once in a while to do that. She was right. I was this nerd playing video games and doing all sorts of stuff on my computer, and I wasn't getting out there. But she said that keep in mind that when you do feel lonely, 
people feel lonely, even if they're in relationships a lot of the time, that we get this image of what relationships are like. Someone told me when I said that there was this one particular love song I liked, which was This Kiss by Faith Hill. And I'm not much of a country music person, but this song really got me. She says, you know, you look at love like a Coke commercial. And that's probably why you're struggling so much, because that's not what it's like at all. She's probably right about that, too. And this author feels that you're not going to find times when you're just never lonely. You'll, you'll feel lonely in and out of relationships. She talks about the fantastic book, Bowling Alone by Robert Putnam, which is an older book. I think it was written in the 90s, but it talks about how people aren't making connections, that we don't have the social structures in place anymore. And anytime you hear someone talking about this book, Bowling Alone, they sure think, wow, I wish there was an update to this book. I want to see what he has to say now. Because essentially the book ends with, hmm, I wonder how the computer world is going to change loneliness. And in some ways, computer, along with dating, has made us less lonely. I get to talk to my friends all the time, whether they live here or across the country. But in other times, that also means that maybe you're not trying as hard to meet people locally. If you're spending all your time on your phone, in school, or at your job, are you really getting to meet your coworkers or the people around you? My friend brought that up to me today, that so many people have their noses in the phones, they never really get a chance to meet anybody and anybody who's local and they could have a relationship outside the internet. And that's where this book agrees too, that it's a big planet and we will at times feel lonely, but we have to also come to realize that there's a difference between loneliness and being alone. Sometimes people feel lonely when they're in an entire room full of people. I used to go to that nerd conference, Gen Con, and I liked it and it was fun and exciting and all the things that nerd conferences could be. But I have to tell you, I used to go by myself and kind of felt lonely in a room of thousands of people. So I get what she's meaning, that we have to really get our definition. Are we lonely or are we just alone at that moment? Brings up this great quote from Elizabeth Gilbert, who says, We have to learn how to walk into a party or a restaurant alone. Otherwise, we will be willing to walk in with anybody or worse, walk out with anybody. Meaning that if we can't come to a place where we can be on our own alone, then we're going to struggle because then we might break down our criteria for what matters in other people, friends or relationships. Because we just feel like we can't go to a restaurant or we can't go to a movie unless we're with someone. And so she suggests that we should learn to love spending time with ourselves. Learn how to come to that balance. Because if we just don't learn to find that stability in with ourselves, we will always struggle and possibly date the wrong people. Another thing to keep in mind is that we have to stop comparing ourselves to other people. I used to do that a lot when I was in my 20s. You know, I'd see my friends and a lot of them were pretty or even skinny and athletes. And so they got along with guys really well. And so then I kept going, oh, I'm unlovable or I'm behind or these other people are doing better than I'm doing. And this author feels that we have to stop comparing ourselves. We come with our own schedules, our own clock. And even if our clock is slower, I mean, mine is really slow because I still haven't really found someone I love in a romantic way. And that's really late, but that doesn't mean anything in the grand scale of things. And so she just says it's okay just to be you and come in with your own time. She said that one of the things that empowers dating is to have knowledge, to know exactly who you are or what you're about, and that it's impossible to know what you don't know you know, for sure. That's what this book is about. It's trying to help us figure out what it is we need to know. She says the first thing is, is that when we're looking at people, sometimes we look at toxic narcissists, she says. Obviously, we don't want to date toxic narcissists, for sure. But here's the problem that she really found, that we're diagnosing people, that we go around in relationships and we say, that person's a narcissist, this person's a this, or this person's a that. And it's interrupting our ability to have relationships with people. Obviously, if the person is a narcissist, you want to stay away from them. But 
people are getting classified as things with no real reason in place at all. And that we have to get away from that or we're just going to have these rules that keep us away from having a romantic relationship. We're robbing ourselves, she said, of opportunity for growth, for meeting new people, from learning from other people, all because we're classifying them. We classify them because they disagree with us or we classify them of a thing because they belong to the wrong political party or the wrong religion or the wrong something. And if we keep putting people into boxes, we're never going to have that kind of deep relationship with people. She says the true measure is that you want to make sure that you're involved with people who are emotionally available. And that means that they're able to have an emotional relationship with you. She says, quote, The hard truth is that people don't want to hear that if you date emotionally unavailable people, it means you're emotionally unavailable too. That if you get drawn to people who can't have a relationship with you because maybe they already have a relationship or they're very distant and they're just not there, the thing that attracted you to them is probably the fact that they're safe. You know, you can't have a relationship with them because whatever reason, they can't have a relationship with you. And so that might say a lot about you as well. The best way to find emotionally available people is to become emotionally available yourself, opening yourself up, being open to relationships, maybe even allowing yourself to get a little hurt. But if we consider ourselves unlovable or undesirable, or we're removed from people, we keep pushing them away and we'll get rejected. Then we start thinking, well, maybe I am really unlovable. Maybe I am really ugly or maybe I am all these things that I think about my deepest, darkest thoughts about myself. And it makes us afraid too to go date with people. It makes us unavailable. And I think that's where I was going wrong too in the past is that I thought, Oh, well, they're just going to fall in love with my friend anyway. Why should I even bother? And so in a sense, she says that this looking for emotionally unavailable people is almost a protection mechanism so that we don't get hurt and we have to become available to people. And once we do, we may get hurt, but it will also make us feel available to other people. She had this interesting point that all the love life advice is always contradicting. If you read the internet and you see all these things, there's all this advice that will say information like, what is your attachment style and all these different trends in relationship. But in the end, those trends, they don't mean anything. They don't get you love and they don't get you relationships. The real question, she says, is would you date you? And that's where she talks about having this dating mindset that's going to help you get there. She is really not into gimmick, tricks, code words, you know, all the things that you find typically in web articles and other things. There's no trick to this at all. And that's what I liked about her book. This is so straightforward. She says that even if we're really independent people, even if we're people who strive to do things on their own, we also have to be the kind of person that sometimes ask for help. We have to be the kind of people who get close to other people, who allow ourselves to be close, and that she says, quote, humans are not meant to be islands. We are designed for human interaction and connection. I thought that was so good because, again, I was prepared for a different book. I don't know what I was prepared for, but I was so entertained every time I went around a corner in this book waiting that she was going to say something (laughs) selfish. And instead, what she's just saying is have boundaries, have standards, know yourself so you know what the right people for you are going to be like. Don't diagnose people. Don't call them names. Don't try to call them narcissists. And she says that if we always put red flags on everybody, we'll not communicate with them. We'll never actually have conversations with them. And all we're doing is we're, we're being emotionally unavailable to them. We're being defensive with them. And that is not the basis of any type of relationship. I know because I had 
an alcoholic parent. I was very concerned about marrying an alcoholic. I saw what a devastating situation that put on my own family. And I thought, if I can avoid an alcoholic or a drug user, then I could have a pretty good shot at having a happy life. I remember when I was dating back in the day, we go out to dinner. I would literally be sitting there counting drinks. Oh, boy, that was the third drink. Can is he getting a fourth drink? Oh no, a fourth drink. You know, and sure enough, you know, you want to make sure that you get the right person for you. But if you're sitting there and waiting to throw the flag down on people before they even have a chance to talk. There was a fellow that I liked, and like I said, he pulled that fourth drink out of a dinner. Later, I found out he was just nervous, and he liked fancy drinks. He wasn't really that much of a drinker in general, but that first date, boy, I counted the drinks, and I was worried. So she's saying, this is where we need to talk and communicate and express our needs. And if we keep finding reasons to veto a relationship, we're just not going to get there. So we'll stop there, and then next week we'll talk about what can we do to actually break through on some of these dating situations. We'll cover some of the myths and some of the things that we can do to bring out in ourselves what we're really looking for and how we can date, again, without wrecking ourselves. So my challenge to you is think about ways that you've thrown flags at people, ways that you've made yourself emotionally unavailable to people. Do you? Strike them down before you give them a chance? Do you classify them before you really even know them? And start thinking, is there a way that you can actually expose a little bit of yourself so that the relationship and the conversation can continue? All right, everyone. Thanks so much. I appreciate you listening to the podcast. This is a big note for me. I registered the domain name for startwithsmallsteps.com. I still have smallstepspod.com. I'm going to have it for a long time. That's what the feed is on. But now my website is going to be startwithsmallsteps.com. The old site redirects to the new site, so there's no problem there. And you can email me at either emails. They'll both come to me. But the new email is jill at startwithsmallsteps.com. Please remember that you can always tell a friend about this podcast if you find it interesting. And you're always welcome to email me if you have something that you would like me to talk about, or maybe you disagree with me, or maybe you agree with me, but I'd love to hear it. Thanks, everyone. Have a wonderful week. And remember, we can start that walk towards other people by taking small steps.